Hello, I'm Luca De Giglio, and this is the Web3 in Travel podcast, where you can learn about crypto, blockchain, and how the new internet will change travel. In this episode, I want to talk about all the ways you are going to lose money in Web3 and all the different techniques and strategies you can use to lose more. So jokes aside, there is a fact of life in in Web3 that you lose money in a way or the other. So the point is to make more than what you lose. The point is never not to lose anything. This is a very experimental space with a lot of risks involved. And even a new kind of risk, which you may not be used to if you come from the traditional finance, is that you have custodial risk. So you can lose money also by losing the money itself. This is, of course, not financial advice because this podcast is about how to lose money. So please do not follow my suggestions here. And it is dedicated to the Web3 in travel specifically because Web3 in travel is at a different point in time than DeFi or NFTs in general. It's a specific industry, which is really at the beginning. So the risk factor and the opportunity is much different than than other things you you may encounter in Web3. In short, it's more risky and also with potentially more upside. So let me remind you the fact that in crypto in general, there's an asymmetrical risk and so an asymmetrical opportunity, which is simplified by saying, if you put $1,000, you can lose maximum $1,000, but it could actually go up to a million dollars. This is the asymmetrical risk. The fact that you cannot go lower than zero, but you could go to 10,000, 100,000, or a million, starting from that 1,000 investment. And while this sounds very exciting, you have to remember that the chances to go from 1,000 to zero tends to be much, much higher than the chances to go from 1,000 to 10,000, and the chances go down to go from 1,000 to 100,000, and they're very low to go from 1,000 to a million, of course. But having said that, the asymmetrical opportunity is there, definitely. So let's see how I can help you losing money in Web3 in travel. Uh, First of all, the highest probability of losing money is still losing your keys. Basically, you create a wallet, there's no money in it, you you save your keys, so the private keys, the seed word, you know, quickly without really caring about this because there's no money in the wallet, and then you put $10 in the wallet, and then a year later is $100, then you put more, and then maybe in a few years there's $100,000 or more, and your security setup hasn't changed. And then the day you need to get those keys, maybe because you lost your computer or whatever, you cannot find them anymore. And your money is completely gone. You look for your free number to call you know, Blockchain Inc. and ask them about the backup of the keys, and you realize that Blockchain Inc. doesn't exist. It was your money. You were completely independent with it, and it's gone forever. The most chilling thought about this I have is that there's a lot of people out there who already have lost their backup, but they don't know it because they don't need it. And while the backup is something you should never lose, your primary key, basically your wallet installed on a phone or on a computer, has a much higher probability of being lost. You know, your computer gets stolen, gets broken. You're, the same goes for your phone, wherever you keep your, your money. So your hot wallet is not forever. Um, if you have money on a MetaMask wallet, you cannot expect it to be there in 10 or 20 or 30 years because that computer is going to be changed. So unless you have a proper backup in place, the moment you change your computer or phone, your money is gone. So your hot wallet is not forever. Your backup of the seed phrase is what is really important here. And of course, as with any backup, you don't realize the backup doesn't work until you need it. Another way to lose it, which is getting more and more common as more and more common people, allow me this turn of phrase, 
get into the space is being hacked. And we are seeing a lot of huge hacks, especially for some reason in the Board Ape Yacht Club NFT project. Many of those people, many people who own those NFTs get hacked. And this is only getting worse. As less technical people come into the space, because you know it's not DeFi anymore, it's NFT, it's more understandable, it's more for artists if you want. And as the value of the wallets goes higher, so if a board ape yacht club NFT is worth like a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars, it's more interesting for the hackers. So they're gonna put more resources and time in trying to hack people. So it's just gonna get worse. On the other hand, wallets are getting safer. People are working on social recovery. You know, there's a lot of work done in making wallets safer, but the, the weak part is always the human part. So if you give a wallet to a person who doesn't care about security, there's no way the wallet can protect the person from that uh, unless they go on a custodial approach, which means they don't have control of their own keys. So it is getting worse. Uh, when web train travel starts picking up seriously, we can have many people from the travel industry getting into these things and getting hacked. So yeah, I don't know, uh, just be careful. I mean, try to learn the basics, do a lot of experiments, always treat your wallet as, you know, if, if it had a million dollars in it, and of course, get a hardware wallet. This is the best way to protect your money. Um, not foolproof. I mean, if you have a hardware wallet and somebody contacts you from the customer support of some company and they ask you for the seed words and you give it to them, you know, the hardware wallet won't help you there. So be careful. But even if you are very careful with your keys and you're very careful in not getting hacked, don't worry. There's more ways to lose money in Web3, in travel or Web3 in general. So one of the best ways to lose money is to invest more money than you can lose. I'm sure you've heard about this. And why is this so critical not to invest more than you can lose? Because if you invest more than you can lose, you are introducing an element which is your emotions in the equation. So if you are buying, investing, or trading, and your emotions are high, well, that's a great way to lose your money. Because if it goes up a lot, you're going to try to keep and not sell because you are, you know, your emotions are telling you, wow, this is life-changing money. While when it crashes, your emotions are going to tell you, you can't lose that money, so sell. So what happens is probably going to sell when it's low. And also, if your emotions are involved, you're going to buy when everybody else is buying. You go into this group thing, and you're going to buy when it's at the top. So buying at the top, selling low, perfect way to lose money. This is an easy one. Now, the really weird part is that when you're listening to this, you're thinking, yeah, of course, who's the idiot who buys high and sells low? Well, we are the idiots who buy high and sell low. It's, you know... Any, any investor has this risk. Now, only the very cold and calculating people are able to do differently. Even myself, many years in the space, if I see that Bitcoin is going up, I got this feeling that I should buy more because it's going to break up, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes it's actually a good moment to buy before it's going up. And when it's crashing and when it's really low, I go like, yeah, maybe it's going to go even lower. I'll wait a little bit. And that actually would be the best moment to buy. So the best trades and the best investments tend to be when you go against your emotions. So the best way to go against your emotions is not to have too many of them. Of course, zero is just for a few you know, elected people who are able to do things without emotions. But for most of us, we do have emotions. We have to keep them low. So if you're losing... If you're playing with money, you can actually lose without crying. That's my threshold, crying. If I lose this money and I cry, that was too much money. If I lose money and I'm pissed, yeah, okay. You know, I can deal with being pissed for a while. But crying, this is really bad. This means you have really invested too much. And again, it seems easy not to do it, but so many people are doing it. And so it's really a real risk for most of us. So as I said many times, if you want to be a trader, be a trader. And being a trader is something which is like, you know, it's a profession. You need to have a certain 
knowledge, again, mastering your emotions. Like, I don't know. I'm not a trader, so I can't tell you how to be a trader. What I can tell you, if you want to be a trader, be a trader. If you're not a trader, don't trade because you're going to lose money. And you know why I can tell you that it's easy to lose money? Because if one person makes at 100x, so they put $1,000 and these go 100x, right? Where is this money coming from? Well, a good part of this money is from people who actually are losing. So you have at least 50 people losing money for one making money. So the probabilities tell you that you are going to lose money if you do trading. Investing is different. Investing in a way, if you never sell, you never lose, right? If you buy something at a high price and then it goes down and stays down, down for five years, and you never sell it, you haven't lost yet, so you can wait five more years. Maybe in five more years, this project will you know, meet the point in which actually it can grow and can be successful, and you're not going to lose money. So investing is a completely different thing. But even in investing, it's good to do a bit of training in the sense that if it's growing too much, even you know, higher than what you, what you were thinking, maybe you are in a moment where everybody's hyped and the valuation is just too high. So it's good to sell a little bit. I think it's called scalping or something. Like you sell on the way to the top. You don't sell at the top, which is impossible. You sell a little bit. Then if it crashes, you're, you're going to suffer less or maybe even stay in the green. While if it goes down and you're an investor, well, you can keep buying too, right? Investing means more understanding the project and define the time range you want to be an investor in it. Uh, trading is mostly tra you know, looking at the, at the uh, technical analysis, the, the charts and what the, the hype is at the moment, what the feeling is at the moment, and trying to trade on other people's emotions. So, and again, you don't want to do that unless you know what you're doing. Another great way to lose money is to buy hyped projects. So sometimes you got these projects who come on the market and say, we're going to be the next. And then, you know, you name it, Airbnb, Booking, Expedia, travel agency, OT, whatever. And they are the next big thing. Their marketing is top notch. Every box is checked. These guys are going to really change everything. And which is fine, but then you, you know, because they are so good at marketing, they're going to attract so many people who are, you know, following the marketing, but are not technical. They don't understand what questions have to be asked and they hype in. So everybody's buying, which is fine. If it's an, I, an ICO, IDO, IEO, whatever kind of token sale they do, and it's a fixed price, well, maybe it's good to get in, especially if then it's so hyped that. When they go on the secondary market, the token shoots up. That's fine. You could sell it at a double or at the 3x, 10x. Fine with that. In that case, you are trading, you're not investing. So a good way to lose money in those initial token offerings is by buying at whatever price without even looking at, at the valuation they are doing for the company. So there are companies who come out and say, we're going to be the next Airbnb and their valuation is already higher than Airbnb. When I say valuation, it's higher. They define their own valuation higher because they make a certain number of tokens and they put them at a certain number, a certain price. You multiply the number of tokens by the price, you have their own valuation. And if their valuation is higher than Airbnb, what can you expect if not to crash after that? unless in a week they become stronger than Airbnb. And your hedge here is that most people don't think about this. They see, oh, that's a good project. It's, it's launching a token. It's, the token is cheap because it's the first sale I'm going to buy in. And this is a really great way to lose money. Another beautiful way to lose money is do not buy those projects because sometimes they, they, they sell at 10 and then it goes to 100 and then it stays at 50 and it, there's no more opportunities to buy at 10. So I just told you a great way is to buy these projects and another way is not to buy them. They're both great ways to lose money. So by not buying them, how do you lose money? Well, if the project is really concretely serious, then you want to you wanna buy those tokens and then you buy them at a higher price than the launch. And then what happens is that maybe there's a crash in the market or they, of course, usually they don't deliver as quickly as you were expecting or as the market was expecting 
or because the price went so high that it becomes really irresistible for people who bought it at a low price to sell that the price crashes after you buy. So it's always easy to lose money in these projects, even if they're very good. Some people wait. They don't buy at the launch. They don't buy after the launch. They buy at the first crash if the project in the meantime has shown something interesting. Another way to lose money is not to sell at the top, which is impossible. It's really hard to sell at the top, but at least not to sell going to the top. So sometimes tokens grow and grow and grow and grow. And instead of saying, okay, it's been growing enough, I can start selling. You can say, well, this is going a hundred times higher. So I'll wait and I'm going to be rich soon. Very good way to lose money here because at the certain point, every token which grows a lot tends to go down. Maybe because it's been growing a lot. And as I was saying before, the more it grows, the more it is difficult for people who bought cheaper not to sell because they can make a profit. And these are the normal people. The traders, it's guaranteed that they sell. They have their targets. When the target is reached, boom, they sell. And the other way is to go through a crash cycle. So there's always crashes in crypto. Sometimes there's big crashes, corrections of 50%, 60%, 80%. And it's hard not to sell in that moment. Or at least, you know, if you bought a 50, it went to 200, and then it went down to 20. You have lost money, even if you haven't sold, at least on paper, right? So if instead you had, you know, sold a little bit going up, well, even if you believe in the project a lot, well, now that you have cash, you can buy more at a lower price. This is something really easy to say and really hard to do. I have big trouble with that. I, there are some projects in the space, uh, in general, in Web3, I believe in. I know when the token is going too high, I don't sell. Uh, and then it crashes and I say, well, I could have sold and with the money I could buy more because I believe in the project. Why is it so hard? Well, there's many reasons. One is, for instance, that if you are invested in many tokens, it's really hard to follow all of them. Another one could be that your token is in some exchange. You can't remember where or it takes time to get back to it. Another reason you may be on Ethereum mainnet and when you want to sell, the gas is really high. So you don't want to uh, spend the gas, which gives you another good, good way to lose money is when you invest very little. So if you invest very little, you won't have time because you're not incentivized to follow it enough. And sometimes the gas is just too much to justify uh, a swap. So if I could go back in time and make a strategy to lose more money, I would buy many, many, many tokens for $100, um, which makes it very easy to lose money because you don't even know what you have anymore. And when you want to sell, it's like, yeah, okay, it's just leave the money or the gas is too high. If you don't have enough ways to lose money, here's one more. Um, buy before researching. So you see a project and you ape in, this is like a specific term used in crypto, APE, like, like an ape. Ape in because everybody's buying and you buy and you don't do any kind of research. That's a great way to lose money. Another beautiful way to lose money is to do research before buying, which is exactly the contrary of what, of what I just told you. Why? Well, because if you spend time researching, in the meantime, the price goes up. If you're looking at one of these formal projects, formal tokens where, you know, you just want to get in because everybody gets in. In that case, if you take some time to research, well, maybe instead of buying 10, you buy you, you're paying 50. So great way to lose money, research before buying. Great way to lose money, buy before researching. So. It's not, it's not easy. I mean, it's really easy to lose money. So either way works. But there's even better ways. One of the best ways is the get rich quick approach, which many people get in this space. You know, you can buy a token for $1,000 and a couple of months later, you can sell it for 100000 or or a million. 
because this happens. And of course, there is a skewed visibility on those things. You're going to hear about these things. You're going to hear only about these things in a way. So you're going to think it's easy. And you're going to say, okay, this person made a lot of money in a very short time. I want to do the same. Perfect. This is a great way to lose money because you're going to try to replicate what happened with the project you read about. And probably that won't be the same. Probably you're getting in too late. Maybe people who are actually making money got in even cheaper and then they started pushing it. Uh, we say shilling it in, in Twitter and in YouTube, etc. So yeah, try to make a lot of money fast. This is a great way to lose all your money fast. The short term vision is a proven strategy to lose your money in Web3 and I'm sure it's going to hold also for Web3 in travel. Here's another one. When you are researching where to invest your money, go on YouTube and look at those influencers. Uh, try to follow those with the weirdest faces in the thumbnail of the video. You know, shouting, surprised, crying, and with these very flashy titles with very strong claims like the next 100x token or the next Bitcoin or this project is going to change everything, those kind of things. Most of the times, those people are selling what they bought already. So they bought it in a private sale for one cent. It starts growing most of the times because they actually push it by buying, they do market making. And when it's at 10, they start pushing even more. And then when they're pushing at the limit, when you see them really talking about the project in great terms, they have started selling already. So if you want to lose money, follow those people, buy what they say, be their exit liquidity, and your, you know, your strategy of losing money is going to be successful. Well, let's see another way. Another way is to try to make a lot of money quickly and at the same time never lose a trade. Like always try to make money on your tokens. Never accept that the token is going to zero, so you never sell it even when it's going to zero. And do not accept the fact that there is a lot of risk involved even in projects which are good. Actually, the best projects the ones which are really going to change travel will take a lot of time and they will probably not waste too much energy in hyping their own token. If you come from outside and you, you get you know, a lot of exposure to travel tokens, which you know, are, are kind of giving this message that the token will go up, well, they're focusing on the wrong thing here. I mean, if you have a project which is going to change some aspect of travel, the price of the token shouldn't really matter too much. You launch the token because it's a very good tool for coordination, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the price, especially the short-term price, shouldn't really matter. It's a way for you to be part of the project and then you for the project to raise money and then to build. And building takes a long time. So when you see those projects putting a lot of energy in their token price, well, they are reinvesting the money you invested to keep your token high. But this is not the point. I mean, you have to focus on building. That's why in many ways, getting money from venture capital sometimes is better because at least you can focus for a while on building. While the tokenization brought a very short time frame mentality in which People buy the token and a week later they are going to ask you when moon, when is this token going 100x? I have to buy my house, right? Now, you don't want to be part of those projects or at least you don't want to be the person who buys at the top. Um, now, every project suffers from this, even the good ones, because you know people, anybody can buy those tokens. So if most of your buyers have this mindset, all you can do as a project is try to kind of manage these these expectations and you know you will see we'll understand how serious the project is by the way they they reply to this subset of investors 
they don't give them too much hope. They move the trading discussion to different channels, like dedicated Telegram channel, and let them do their thing. Of course, the price of the token is important, but it's never in the short term. And it's never like if you see a project which tries to keep the token price high by you know talking about it by hiring influencers and stuff this is a red a red flag what they have to do is to find ways for the token to have utility and meaning and then let the market do their thing so there's really many ways to lose money and you know don't be disheartened even in bull markets like 2021 there's ways to lose money i mean you could not lose money by just buying a few serious tokens and just wait. And then when they go up, sell a little bit, go in there, you know, get back all your investment and the rest is your profit. But if you really want to lose money, there's many ways, even in bull markets. So don't despair. You can do that. <laughs> so to, to sum it up, of course, this podcast wasn't about giving you ideas on how to lose your money. but I really think it was good to get it from the other side. Normally, you would say how to make money. But as I said before many times, it is not really hard to make money in these markets because it's really early. As long as you don't lose money, as long as you don't get killed. By killed, I mean you lose your capital. Because if you have no capital, you're not going to make any money, right? So first rule is survive. That's the most important thing. Don't lose your money. Now. If your money doubles or triples or makes a 10x or 100x, it's a different discussion. At least do not lose your money. Another great way to lose your money is to get into these bull runs where everything is going up and you somehow manage to lose money. And then you go like, this is all a scam. This is all a Ponzi scheme. I'm out. And then you are out for a few years and you miss the real growth, right? Uh, travel, as I was saying, is, is not even started in Web3. So maybe the best way overall to lose money is not to participate into this because you've been burned from the 2017 ICO or maybe from some NFT trading you've done. It's like you bought pets.com and because you were angry after the bubble, in internet stocks, you didn't buy Google, you didn't buy Amazon, you didn't buy all the others. So that's that's a very painful thing to realize 10 years later, right? So first rule, don't get killed, not only because losing your money is bad, but because it could actually convince you that this whole market is, is not real, it's just a scam, and then you're going to lose when things get really, really exciting, which for travel is the next five to 10 years. I mean, ahead of us, there are projects in travel, tokens, which are not even launched yet, which in five to 10 years could be really the next Airbnb, the next booking, the next everything. We are going to rewrite everything with new companies. And those companies, most of those companies do not exist yet. They are going to slowly start to appear. And you want to be in a position where you have the money to participate. Of course, as I said a few times, you can even help them and get some money but, and get some tokens. But, you know, it's good to have some money to buy into those. And because in the meantime, you have learned a lot, you will be able to avoid the scams. You will be able to invest in the good ones and you will be able not to sell when the good ones go down, etc., etc. So it's a preparation time today. Uh, if you want to lose money, do not follow this podcast, do not read, do not learn, just wait until the next bull run comes in and do all the mistakes I told you to do. And that's going to be also a more comfortable way to lose money because you're not wasting your time in, uh, in learning. Now, this was a whole ironic way to present the thing, but unfortunately, many people will do the mistakes I, I said here. And one little podcast in, somewhere in the internet will not save most of those people. I wouldn't probably be saved by listening to this podcast because in a way you have to experience them yourself. When there's a lot of exuberance in the market, you, are, you tend to be exuberant. When the market is down, you tend to be down. The, the, the psychology of group thinking is just too strong. 
and I hope at least I put some red flags there so when you find yourself in those kinds of situations maybe you remember and maybe you wonder am I doing one of those things and remember the projects which we really become big they never or almost never look really promising at the beginning Amazon was ridiculous at the beginning Airbnb was considered ridiculous at the beginning so if you want to lose money just invest in those projects which make perfect sense to you so if they make perfect sense to you they are going to fail most of the times they have to have an aspect of like this is crazy this is how can this work it it has to go against the common knowledge and common sense in a way especially in web3 which is completely changing the dynamics of how a project is successful you know so i don't think i will be able to see the next big winners i i don't think i will be i i'm sure i'm gonna lose a lot of money in the wrong projects i just hope to get a little bit of the good ones and i'm not too worried because it's not about like a new project pops up and you go all in and you either make it or you lose it you start a journey together with this project maybe you buy a little bit of those tokens maybe you are able to follow them maybe then you realize they don't go anywhere and you sell your tokens or maybe you realize well these guys are for real they're gonna need time well great if they need five years i have five years of investing in this project i can do right i can buy constantly so the very pro the successful projects probably nothing is sure but probably will take a lot of time which gives you time to get in so you won't actually miss them you probably won't get in or we probably won't get in when they are at their cheapest but you know you didn't need to buy amazon when it was very 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 cheap you just needed to buy it when it was much cheaper than now so the long-term view is the safest way and it's a way to buy a little bit of this land which is being built without even thinking about selling it you're being you are building wealth uh, you you are kind of getting pieces of land in this new continent and when you need cash you take it out or even better if you have a lot of it you simply make money by borrowing or yield farming or whatever system we're going to have in the future so if the approach is building wealth in web3 then your cash flow can even come out from this wealth without even selling it so that's the approach i'm i'm taking myself i'm a horrible trader i'm not that a good investor i try to be more of a builder but in general i just jump from one thing to the other so i am not really a person you should look at or ask me what tokens to buy um i, I don't know right uh, i understand the basics and i share them with you i think there's very good opportunities for all of us and in this specific episode i wanted to show you how many ways and these are not all of them you can lose money in this environment so i hope this helps you in your journey all right this is the end of today's episode i really hope you enjoyed it for more insights on web3 follow me on twitter at tripluca t-r-i-p-l-u-c-a and see you next time